Um, the Bible said that God is love. So I see that you have playpen. I have things there that are walker. And my question to all of you is, let's say that Jesus would be sitting there. He was man and he was God. And a kid would start, you know, uh, crying or he want to run around. What do you think that would be the attitude of Jesus? Shh, 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 shh. Don't make noise. I don't think that he would do that. I think that he will catch the little kid or the little girl, pick it up, and with the love of God, little girl, little boy, what is that you want me to do for you? In the ear. See, little kids, they don't know how to communicate a lot. But they cry. They want something that, that, that they would meet the need. And, and could be a candy, water, lollipop, or they need the diapers changed. But a lot of time, even as they get uh, a little older, three or four, and they catch tantrum, and, and, and we're not on the same page. Oh, you behave. You cry. And, and, and where's the love in that? I believe they are communicating with us, but they're not in the same frequency. So Jesus, knowing that, out of the love of God, right, he's compelled to go hug them and whisper, what is that I could make for you? Well, the, the reason that we have a lot of disconnect is we don't come to Jesus as little children. We come with all this motion, thinking that Jesus is like this, and I have to, of course, you have to walk right, you have to do what is right and stay away from sin. That's because you love them and he love you. But you could come just the way that you are with your shortcomings. And I guarantee you that he will whisper in your ear, what is that you want me to do for you? Thank you Lord. Just because it's relationship. There is, you know, it's just all about relationship. There's nothing uh, hitting about his relationship. There's not the Bible said in John 316, that God so loved humanity, God, and gave his only son, the very best that he could do to redeem, and this is Jesus. And a lot of time I have been guilty in the past, raising kids and, and, and being a little bit shortcoming, and, and, and I did not connect with them the way that Jesus connected with me. Mm -hmm. So that's a disconnect right there. So we have to always go to the level of Jesus. He understands our shortcoming. He loves you and your worst a day is not a brownie point system. Right. It's love and obedience. Mm -hmm. It's easy to yield when you love someone. Right. It is hard when you got a preconceived idea, right, about the way that person may be. So we're done with the piece of wood. I had to take that wood home. Okay, good, good, good. Oh, oh, it's here, it's here. Okay, okay. All right, no, no, take a, take a piece of the, Yeah, I, I want you to look, at, Pastor, at, at the wood, and, and there's in section A, paragraph two, two scratches. Okay, you, you saw them, right? Okay. So let me tell you the meaning of that. So I am by Cornerstone Church 20-something years ago before the church was there, and in the lobby I met this girl, and I'm talking to her, and in the spirit, I see a piece of two by four with two little scratches, one deeper and one light. And I asked the Lord, Lord, what is the meaning in my mind of this that you're showing me concerning this lady? And he told me, that has to do with affliction. She has allowed people to afflict her, and she has afflicted herself. So I share that with the lady. And all of a sudden, bam, she goes to the floor, to the concrete. Mm -hmm. So Pastor buys me, come and say, prophet of the Lord. Uh, when you prophesy here, we give you the microphone. I said, I didn't prophesy nothing for the lady. I just spoke what I saw, and she went down. She's still there. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she gets up, and uh, she says, how do you know that that was happening with me right now? You know, I didn't share about the vision or whatever. I said, God knows all things. And he's telling you, do not allow people to afflict you. Neither you afflict yourself either. Don't do that. So that was the word. Out of a piece of wood like that in, in, in the spirit. Now, 
I said, I'm getting out of there. And I'm like, wow, 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 wow. So I said, let me do a, 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 a Bible study about affliction. Right? Because this is so deep. Yeah. And God is showing me this. Thing. I have never heard preaching or teaching about affliction. Right, right. So the Lord says, if you lose your keys or you lose uh, your Bible or something that is dear to you, do you think about or you go after? And you begin to trace it in your mind. When was the last time that you have your keys or the light or whatever it is that you need uh, the Bible? And you go, yeah, I was outside in the porch. And yes, I was drinking my coffee. Yeah. Let me go and see if I, if I find my Bible. Sure enough. So then the Lord says, tell my people to trace afflictions. You know, put a trace. And I go, I never heard of that, you know, to trace. Then I go, wow, Lord, it makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to be talking about that. But before I do, let me share some prophetic words that the Lord gave me for this season. I don't know if you know a little bit about plumbing. Mm -hmm. You have cast iron pipes, mm -hmm. that's all. And you have PVC, new style. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying that you're coming to a new season in which I will marry the old and the new. And I, through my love and my grace, I will put them both together to function as I call them to be. The old and the new. All in one accord. Amen. So this is how I get that prophetic word. I'm talking with somebody and all of a sudden I see this cast iron pipe but cut at the bottom, cut at the top, nothing with it. Then all of a sudden I see a specific joint on the bottom, uh, like a reducer from like eight inches to four inches. And then I see PVC pipe. And I'm asking the Lord, what is the meaning? And that's the meaning. And the Lord said that at this season, I'm connecting the old and the new. The old and the young. Now think about this. The older people are more rigid. I'm not old. I'm talking about old people from the other church. So we now have no old people. Everybody is young. So then when you take the PVC pipe and you put a little fire to it, it becomes pliable. The fire of God softens the heart. And then you can bend them. I go, wow. So I'm just sharing a little bit how I get my downloads. A lot of times I pictures, a lot of times that I'm hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now the other thing is God is going to do something supernatural with you. Don't look at how many are you, but look at what God is going to be doing. He told me that you have to be intentional to bless others regardless that they will not come to the church. Yeah. Just be intentional like you could bring a basket of food or some finances or tokens to do the laundry, whatever. Be intentional and don't judge them by what they look or what they drive or whatever. Just be a blessing to them. Because we forget that everything in life is sowing and reaping. Amen. So don't be intentional to the people that you like. No, 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 no. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. The people that the Lord loved and the people that they didn't love, he still blessed them. Amen. Because it's everything about sowing and reaping. And how could God bring promotion to you and give you a bigger building and more people if we have a problem loving some people? Uh -huh. You know, the love of God is unconditional. Mm -hmm. So this way, when they get to heaven, they will not say, nobody ever loved me. No one ever cared for me. And they said, yep, Cornerstone Church, when they're Fridays and Mondays, they try to do this, and you rejected them. So the love was revealed to them. They didn't respond. So we do our part, no matter how small or big we may be, and God will do his rest. Okay, so let me see. Um... Concerning food, you know, sometimes we got a budget and we might buy food for 20 or 25 people and all of a sudden God will send 
50 or 80 or 90, and you're in a pickle, what do you do? Pray. Pray and believe God that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. If he multiplied the food for 5,000, one or 200 is nothing for him. Amen. Right? So always go back to the reference of the Bible. What does the word of God say? That's your, your compass. That's your directional. So as you do things, uh, and, and, and even if you have three hot dogs left, and you know that people are there online and you don't have either no more finances, no more food, he said, Lord, I believe what your word says, that you shall pray or lay hands on the hot dogs and you will multiply them, oh God. Lord, I'm not going to panic. I'm not going to call help, help. No, my help comes from the Lord. I'm going to believe him. You know, without having a trace of doubt, just fully persuaded that what you read in the Bible is the true and only the true, so help you, God. Amen. And, and everything, I, I like Pastor Paul a lot because he says that he's very, um, not selective, but he checks out the Bible because everything that he preached, God would test him. Mm -hmm. And that's true. Stop it with me. More than what I want to say. So we have experienced things in our walk with God that people came to our house and we didn't have no credit card. We didn't have no 10 or $20 for a rainy day. It was just that. And I ran to the stove. I laid my hands. I prayed. And the funny part about miracles is this. It's not that you're going to see an open heaven and manna coming to your house or hot dogs coming in, but it is like this. You give a hot dog and another hot dog will come. You take a teaspoon of spaghetti or whatever, and a teaspoon of spaghetti will be back there. So it stays the same, but you feed 20 or 30 people with the same amount. You know, just believe God. No matter how deep it looks to you or how complicated, let God worry about that. You just believe the Lord. You just believe the Lord. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us eyes to see. Lord, thank you for giving us ears to hear. But precious Lord, with the seeing and with the hearing, give us a heart of understanding that we may know how to guide this great and mighty people of yours. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So if you have your Bible, please let's open up with Psalm 34, verse 19. And the title of the message is, Many are the afflictions. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions. And that word affliction could be, um, turn has offense. They're like cousins. You got afflicted, you got offended. So let's go. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. What causes affliction in our life? What is the cause? So I'm going to give you the message ahead, and then we're going to come back. The first way that you get afflicted is self-inflicted. Nobody has to do that but yourself. So let's say that you are driving in the New York Thruway, and the speed limit is 65. But that day, you know, you, you have your Mario Andretti T-shirt, you have your new sneakers, and you're not making 65. Did I got it correct? I'm listening. I'm asking what she's listening. Oh, okay. So, so, so you, you know, you, you feel like a sporty Joe today. And, and, and you get in your car, and instead of 65, you're making 75. And you hallelujah. All of a sudden, the, st the state troopers stop you. And he gives you a love offering. Yeah. Love love offering. offering. <laughs> for the state of New York. Let's not talk bad about them. So that offering was self-inflicted. Yeah. Yes, it was. You put it on the cruise control and you don't have no problem. And you can still praise God. Amen. So then people cash an attitude, not the people of this church, the other church. Oh, my God, I'm a man of God or a woman of God. And look at that state trooper. 
He gave me a love offering. How old were you was going? 85, but he claims there was 72. You know, he, he gave you a break already. That was self-inflicted. That was self-inflicted. So how could we go and complain when we brought that in ourselves? So we go to Psalm 107, 8 through 17. Psalm 107, 8 through 17. <clears throat> Self-inflicted. All that men will give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfied the long soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and iron, because they rebel against the word of God and despise the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, he brought down their hearts with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Nobody helped them. Then, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of the distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their chains in pieces. Oh, that men will give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. 17 is the key. Fools, because of their transgression, and because of their iniquity, were afflicted. So according to the word of God, we brought that upon ourselves. And then the Bible said that all things were for good for them that love the Lord. But even if you don't love, he's molding you and fashioning you to get you to the place he wants you to go. As we was traveling today, we was talking in, in the vehicle that I remember walking six, seven miles on the winter because I didn't have a vehicle and things was not right and was my wilderness experience and I'm crying. And as I'm walking and crying, the tears froze on me. And in the summer, I would walk and cry and, and was a refining that God was doing in my life. In another word, he was breaking me to make me. But I realized there was God doing this on my life. So I look back at whatever, 30 years or 29 years, and I said, Lord, that was so good. I never complain about anything because I knew that the handle of God was upon my life. And then he would speak to me some things. So I, I don't know who I'm speaking with, but do not get out of the hand of God. Do not reject the work that he's doing in your life because he's preparing you for what is ahead. If you stay the same, there's no preparation. So self-infliction, if you recognize that you brought that upon yourself, don't blame God. Go and say, Lord, forgive me for doing this to myself, but give me another chance that we may do it right. Okay? <coughs> Hallelujah. Okay. So you are afflicting yourself, and my million dollar question would be how do you receive restoration? Because you could not be afflicted the rest of your life. That's only for a time and a season, right? And then God will begin to bring what? Restoration. So here we go. They confess their sin. Confession of sin must happen first for restoration to take place. So what I learned was this, that God has given us, according to the word, a ministry called restoration and reconciliation. The ministry of restoration and reconcile people back to God. Yeah. Through our own stumbling and learning, you still have a chance to help others. Okay, so the God is so good. The very leader they spoke made intercession. Remember Moses 
He's ministering to the people, and they don't want to listen to Moses. So what happened? The Lord sent a plague and begin to deal with the rebellious spirit in them. And the Bible said that always God made a way of escape. He did a, a, a pole, like a pole, like a snake, and put the snake around the pole. And then Moses told them by the word of the Lord, tell the congregation that they have come against me and against God. If you look at the, the snake on the pole, whoever had been bitten by the snake, they will get healed. Do you know that when you go to the doctor, that's the emblem on the ring? Yeah. You know, they have a, a, a little snake with the um, pole. Isn't that amazing? That that happened many, many years ago and how God used that to heal. So that was a symbolic gesture of Jesus the Christ. Right? For then the Lord told Moses to wrap a snake around the pole. And as the people looked to it, they were healed. And back then, they didn't know that God was going to use that event in the Bible to use it for the medical profession in the ring. So let's go now real quick, afflicted by others. When other people afflict you, and you can find that in Matthew 18, Six through seven. Have you ever asked the Lord, Lord, why did other people afflict me? Or why people in the church, not in this church, but in the other church, they afflict one another? What is the reason? I'm going to tell you that in a little bit. <coughs> Matthew 18, six through seven. But who shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it would be better for him that a millstone would hang around his neck and that he would drown in the deep of the sea. Woe to the world because offenses, for it must need be to offense come. But woe to the men by whom the offenses come. Wow, 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 wow. So I'm going to take my time here. And I'm going to explain to you why God has such a high standards that offenses will not come your way. First the natural and then the spiritual. So let's say that this young man here represents a water well. You know, you dig it by hand and you put bricks and then you get a... Okay. So he has maybe two or three acres, a couple of sheep. A couple of sheep, nobody's, okay. <laughs> so we're leaving it there. And, and, and with that said, right, the enemy comes and God is prospering the man of God and is growing. Mm -hmm. The enemy at night will come with rocks and dirt and clock the well. So he could not give water to the sheep. What we forget is this, you have a spiritual well in you. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. An offense is tailor-made to clock your well. And, and, and I could give you a picture how that looks. All right? <coughs> Offenses, right, is going to hit your belly. Let me go to another level. Here we go. <coughs> the Bible said to forgive those who have done you wrong, right? Now, you pray and you pray to forgive them. And, and you have prayed a year, but when you see the person, you get a knot in your tummy. Mm -hmm. That knot is telling you, you have not forgiven them in the spirit. Mm -hmm. You forgave them with your intellect, with your carnality. Mm -hmm. So the devil knows that if he could get you offense, you're not a threat to him. Mm -hmm. Because you carry that inside of your tummy. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That's without the offense. That's why he say war to the person who brings an offense to one of my little ones. So here we go. Ready? I, I didn't know these things. I got a lady who, um, and, the, and the husband, was an assistant uh, pastor, but he was a principal in a school in Virginia. <coughs> 
And um, the, the husband goes to a simple operation uh, at, at, at the local hospital. So the surgeon assistant was a lady that is very pregnant, eight months or whatever, and she passes the tool to the doctor, the one who's operating. But because she had this huge baby in her belly, when she moved, hit the hand of the surgeon. And that guy that he was doing a simple operation came paralytic. He couldn't walk. So she was bitter. What took place to her husband? She was bitter because how could God allow that? And she went bitter for many, many years. And I don't know how she invited herself to my house. I don't have a clue. So she's taking a step. I don't know what he's saying. So he's taking a step. She's taking a step from the basement up to the first floor. And I look at her belly, and I saw the well offended. Right? So then I go, Lord, what is that? And she says, the Lord says, she had been offended because what happened to the husband. I go, oh, that's what she's here. You know, then you get two and two in your mind. So, so with that said, uh, she stood with us probably like a week or two weeks, whatever the time was. When she left our home, I had another picture of her. The well completely restored. Does not the Bible talks about Siklot? That the enemy came and burned the city, took the wife, and clogged the wells. That's all natural and spiritual. If you got sheep and cows and animals, and you don't have no water, they will die. So if the enemy, if the enemy will try to clog your well, then this is how you go, Proverbs 1911. How do we overcome offenses from other people? And Proverbs 1911 declare, a man's wisdom give him patience. It is to his glory to overlook an offense. It's just the glory of God with the wisdom to learn. How do not allow that to stick in you? Right. right? Though we have to use the shield of faith, that's okay. But a man's wisdom, give him patience. It is to his glory to overlook an offense. That's maturity. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because you know that some people, they throw those bullets at you very intentional. Right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got self-inflicted, number one. Number two has been afflicted by others, right? So let's go to the third. It's only four afflictions. When God afflicted you, right? That would be the third. So self-inflicted, afflicted by others. When God afflicts you, and the last one is when the devil afflicts you. The four affliction. We started this message, you have to learn to trace where does the afflictions are coming. All right? So let's go. When God afflicts us, Psalm 90, verse 15. And declare, make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us. In the years wherein we have seen evil. See, when you rebel against God, God will do that for you. Psalm 90, verse 15. Make us glad according to the days where you have afflicted us. Woo, Jesus. And then we go uh, to the next one will be Acts 20, from 22 to 23rd. 23rd. And see now, I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. Except that the Holy Spirit testify in every city, saying that the change and tribulation awaits me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count myself dear to myself, 
so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify of the gospel of grace of God. So the prophetic word was not an encouraging prophetic word, right? It's like saying, woman of God, and the Lord said, you want to go to Japan. But Japan is not what you're thinking. They're going to hate you. They're not going to like you. And they will not even open the windows or the doors for you to have a place to stay. Wow. Who want to go? But then she says, so far be from that. I know that God told me to do that. Whatever awaits me there as a soldier of the Lord, I'm going to embrace it, but I'm going. I, I, I just love things like that because, you know, he knew already that God was speaking to him. When God afflicts us, okay? So we're going to go to the last one. When God afflicts us. When God afflicts us, for the most, will bring desti purpose and destiny to our life. So we're going to talk about a guy that you know very well. And you'll find that in Genesis 37, 2, 37, 28. Genesis 39, 4, it's all there. The lifestyle of Joseph, right? The Bible said that Joseph received dreams and visions from the Lord. He shares this with the father, the mother, and the brothers. And the Bible declared that as much as he shared with them, the more that the brothers hated him. So this is so cool because you thought that the brother was bringing that affliction. The Lord was using the brother to afflict him to get him to the destiny. Remember when the brothers found them in Egypt that said, forgive us for the evil that we did to you. He, he was the second in command in charge of the whole nation. But he tells his brother, you was not that smart to do that. Yeah. was God who did it. He just used you. Mm -hmm. So who was afflicting Joseph? God. God. And the better that he conducted himself, Potiphar's wife had to set up to derail him from the calling of God. Mm -hmm. In other words, that lady wanted to rape him. And the Bible said, no, you're a married woman. That's evil if I even touch you. And the Bible said, the more affliction came. The own brother afflicted to get him there. Now part of his wife afflicted him as well. But was not her. Was God using her to cleanse the Egypt out of him? A pure vessel. A vessel that could be trusted to guide a nation. He goes to jail. He got more affliction. He interprets the dream to two of the butler and, and uh, I forgot the guys, or the baker. And, and uh, yeah, thank you. Peace be with you, you good man. And that was it. She got afflicted again. And then he says with a voice of a broken heart, please tell those there that I'm innocent. You hear that a lot of people who go to jail, everybody's innocent. But God was afflicting him. And a lot of time, we have to learn. When you get afflicted, who is afflicting you? That's the whole message. Or if you get offended, how are you going to deal with an offense? How does an offense look in the spirit realm? We're going to talk about that. He told me that we're not done. We got time. So we said again, when God afflicts us for the most, it will bring purpose and destiny to our life. Every person who, one way or the other, guided, encouraged, or closed the door for Joseph, God's hand was on them. So when we go through affliction, do we see or we think that it's the person who is afflicting you? Or we could see beyond that and say, it is God. And if you could see beyond the affliction, then you are in a good place with the Lord. 
So let me just share something real, real cool that I saw the other day. This particular pastor is speaking, and there is probably 100 or 200 people in this room. And um, when he said, uh, Brother Jose and Pastor Brenda, come and help me out. There's another you pastor or whatever, young pastor sitting 50 feet away. From the time that he spoke, I need you to help me. And they didn't pick that other person. The devil twisted those words and he got offended. And I'm seeing this in live action. Was like if the devil punched him in his stomach. Bam! And he go, ooh, bend like that, right? Because this is what the enemy is looking to offend your belly. So he got bent out of shape. Now, I want to be very transparent with all of us here today. Do you get offended when they hurt your feeling? Baby bottle, change the diapers. Or do you get offended when they offended Jesus that you love? You see what I'm saying? That shows the maturity of who you are. Could I do it again? I love the one one. Here we go. <laughs> because you see, when they said, whoever, I am offended. <laughs> Take the violin and change the diapers. Right? Maturity, right? Operates different. I got offended because they offended the Jesus in me. So let me take a quick picture. Jesse is the father of David. And the Philistine are fighting against the Israelite. So Jesse said, please go and find out how the troops are doing. So here comes Jesse and send his son with a love offering and food. And David approached his brother. So let's say this is David's brother. And he said, oh, you little caca, little thing. You, you like to goof off. What are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. You like to get a free show. That's what you hear. What do you do with the chiefs? And the brother is insulting David. David's not been out of shape. You know, he took it. Then he goes by and he hears that this guy named Goliath is insulting the God that he loves. And David said, is there not a cause here to get offended? How come all of you are offended because of me, but none of you are offended because of the Jesus Christ that we serve? So the anointing in that offense arose in David. And then look how the carnal leaders operate. Saul is full of fear. And now all of a sudden Saul is want to coach this young guy that is anointed of the Lord and say, put my breastplate. I have killed a few deers and I kill a few devils with this. And, and David said, I, I, I don't want to disrespect you, but I have to flow in my anointing. I have to take just a little stone. And let God anoint that stone, and I'm going to kill the one that is bringing offense to my God. Amen. So do you get offended when they offend God, or you get offended when they offend you? It is a good word for this house and for all the houses. Because we represent the Lord Jesus. Does not the Bible say that when one suffer, we all suffer. We one rejoices. That's the body of Christ. But offenses will come your way. We talk about that. But I look at David as a pattern of how he got the anointing, function with the anointing, and, and, and what he did was this. He did covenant with God. Your friends are going to become my friends. Your enemies are going to become my enemies. And he, he displayed that very simple. When his brother tried to offend him, you know, stick the, the donkey's tail, just leave it there. It doesn't bother me. But once you talk bad about my God, we have a problem. So this way, offenses doesn't come your way. Because God is going to back you up. 
We see, when I learn these things, I stay on my lane. I don't try to be somebody else. I have to stay on my lane. Because that's how I learned, how I knew when people didn't like me and they liked me or whatever. I don't care about that. I want to know how God cares about me. So this way, I don't allow offenses to come my way. So I, I, I'm praying that all of us here today will um, be mature and you will learn to trace offenses. The first one was self-inflicted. Number two was inflicted by others. Number three, afflicted by God. And the last one is going to be afflicted by who? Okay, so let's go there. Hallelujah. I, I, I just, you know, I like things that are simple. I'm not a complicated guy. I don't know if you know that, but I, 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 I could not. So one, let me just get here, okay. So we're going to go. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of all. When the devil afflicts us, First Peter 5, 8 through 9. Say amen when you get there. Like I tell my children in my house, take your time, but hurry up. I'm, not, I'm just messing up with you. Amen. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. This is a family day. Nobody's in a rush, please. Okay, so I said First Peter 5, 8 through 9. Now, I love the wording and says, be sober, be, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists as fast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In another word, we read the Bible, but we don't pay no mind. I'm talking about people who love the Lord. They don't pay no mind. They don't look at the bigger picture. So let me stop here. Let me, no, let me finish. James 5.10. James 5.10. Take my brethren, the prophets, who has spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering and affliction and patience. So if you are a prophet at home, if God uses you and you're being uh, uh, afflicted and learning a patient, you are in the right place. James 5.10, take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering and affliction and patience. So here we go again. Remember the revelation that Jesus told the disciple, let's cross over to the other side in the boat. And he's taking a nap or a siesta. And all of a sudden, the wind and the storm arose. And, and all the disciples in the boat are calling 911. Help, help, help. And Jesus is taking a power nap. Like he don't care. All of a sudden, he wakes up. He looks at the storm. Peace be with you. Rebuke them, O ye of little faith. But it's more than that. The Bible said that right behind the, the boat was many other little boats following them. How come we never talk about the little boats? We only concentrate on the boat that was Jesus. Yeah. But those little boats was people who didn't have the ability or understanding like the disciples did. The mundane people of life that you see them every day, you pass them by and you ignore them. That's the little boat. So if the bigger boat was going through all of this trouble, imagine the little boat. You see, you have to look at the bigger picture. Like, like say, if you have a good income and things are a little tight right now, Imagine the little people who make less than you, they must be suffering more than you. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the little boats. Yeah. So when we read the Bible, we have to ask, Lord, open my eyes that I may see 
Give me ears that I may hear and understand. But Lord, give me a heart of understanding. That's looking at the bigger picture. We have all read that with the storm. But our focus is with Jesus rebuking the disciples and telling them, oh, you have little faith. Okay, that's true. But how come the Bible talks and many other little boats follow them? How come? Because God wants you to look at the bigger picture. Are we getting blessed? So I, I, when I read the Bible, I, I just like, wow, Lord. And at time I would tell my wife, read it 50 times. And why I want her to get the, the insight of the Lord. She says, I read that 49 times. I said, read it one more time, 50, okay. <laughs> and I said, do you see anything? She said, I told you already. I just see the boat. I see Jesus. I said, I said oh, yeah. So then I said, you read about the little boat? She said, yeah. But a lot of time, it's not that she's not paying attention. Ooh, ooh, it passes over. So when I read things that doesn't make sense, I know God is speaking to me. Mm -hmm. You know, and then he says, the little boat, let's say that pastor's boat is 33 feet. And he has six or 12 people there. He could take it. My boat is 12 feet. The same turbulence with the sea, I'm getting it, and worse, small Because I grew up by the seashore. And a small little vessel with an engine, it goes high in the wave. But when it comes down, it goes like straight. And you see all the water going through the back. And you said, I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to swim. And by the grace of God, you go a little further. But the bigger boat have a better chance to survive that. And the bigger boat, it, it, it is us who have Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen. That we could call upon him in the storm, Amen. and he will come and rescue. Yeah. But those little boats, that they don't have Jesus inside of them. We have to give them a hand of fellowship. Jesus. Come, come, Thank come. And, and the sea and the storm is not only water. could be the situation that is happening in America right now. Not a year to come right now. And some of them might be suicidal. Some of them might be depressed and oppressed. And you who know the Lord and the power of God, stretch your hand and say, no, you're not going under. Right. I'm going to give you a hand of fellowship. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to try to be a blessing to your situation. Yeah. Thank you, there is a brother that is not here today. And I think he's a plumber or a businessman and has a son. 18 or 19. Huh? I think the floor guy. And I, and I think about him often because he told me to pray for his son. And I said, Lord, what is his name again? Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring Brother Dan, his house, his children, his finances. Lord, and I ask, oh God, that you will have grace and mercy upon his life and the life of his household. Yeah. Father, that they will not perish at, at this team season and the chaos, but that the grace of the Lord, that the Lord will cover them against the wind, against the, the, the afflictions that are coming to America, that he will know that the Lord that he serves is a God of covenant. Yeah. And Father, we send you love, your grace, your mercy, but give him wisdom, O oh Lord, how to manage his affair, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Glory be to God, glory be to God, glory be to God. So now, you know the story of J Job. And if you're taking notes, you can find that in First Job 6 through 13, right? Was the Lord who gave permission to Satan to afflict him was the Lord was not the enemy who got overhead the Lord allowed but who did the beating Satan mm -hmm. 
So now, what I love about the Word of God is we have to rightly divide the Word of truth, right? In John 10.10 10 says, the enemy has come to rob, kill, and destroy. Comma. But then it said, but I, the Lord, have come that you may have life and life more in abundance. So you have to know who is doing the damage and who is doing the blessing. Yep. It, 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 it is very, very simple. It's not too complicated. So from this ministry, you will know how to put a trace who is doing who to you. Now you don't have no excuse that you think that the devil is doing everything to you. Sometimes we bring that harm to ourselves. Sometimes we allow other people to harm you. And you know how that comes? People, they want to give you all the junk and they use you as a garbage can. And you have to say, no, 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 no. Or, or, if, or if it's bringing division and separation in your house, in the church, no. You want to share something bad about brother or sister? Let's wait until she get here and we talk about it. Amen. Nip it off, nip it off. You're not a garbage can. You're a woman and a man of God. You have been called by his name. You're whole, you have royalty in your blood and you have holiness in you. Do not allow no one to block that. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Hallelujah. But the Lord delivers them out of them all. Glory be to God. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. I, I, I'm just um, overwhelmed right now because of things that... Uh, not only do I see, but I hear in the spirit of the Lord. Okay, here we go. You know, confessions about the word of God is like having a raincoat. It's like having a jacket. So let's say you're getting out of your home and you don't want these things to come near you. Hallelujah. Father, I rejoice in the God of my salvation. Lord, I thank you for the blessings of the Lord. For you said in your word that God would bless me, and with the blessings, he will add no sorrow. So, Heavenly Father, I position myself to receive the blessing without the sorrow. And, Lord, I also pray today, this day, that I got many things to do and many places to go. But, Lord, order my steps. Lord, let the word of the Lord be a lamp into my feet that I may walk and run and not stumble. Keep away offenses and stumble that I may finish the race that you have given me to do. Oh, Lord, send your ministering angels. Send the prophet. Send whoever, oh, Lord, and keep me in the narrow. So what you did, you, you spoke the word of the Lord over your life. You did not allow the enemy uh, uh, to bring offenses or yourself. There's no room. What is the other one? No good thing will the Lord at all for those who walk uprightly. You're up uprightly because you have the Holy Spirit. There is not a maybe. Oh, my God, my God. Just, just I feel like God's telling me to do something different here. I said, okay, Lord. Lord, I decree that this church shall be a radical church. That this church will be a church that is completely led by the spirit and not of the flesh. That people will come in distress, come in running, running through those doors because there's a situation that it could cost them their life. And that... Uh, the leaders of the church would speak like Samuel spoke to David and said, you are in a safe place. You can remain here and nothing is going to happen to you. Father, I, 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 I'm just so, 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 so blessed. And Lord, uh, why do you want me to share this? Thank you, Lord.
When the Lord says, bring this word to the house, it's for a reason. And I get tested not even finishing the word. I mean, uh, a very dear friend of mine, he's from Florida, he allowed me to minister to, to, to the people. And um, I'm, 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 I'm ministering about we see it in the chair, but we also see it in the heavenly realm. Mm -hmm. So what that means is you have dual citizenship, dual. Yeah. Okay. So I'm ministering this and people are not getting it. So I asked that young lady, where, where, where are you seated right now? Where are you seated? Right in the church, right there. That's half true. Because if we're seated in the heavenly places and we're seated here, we have dual citizenship. Amen. Earth and heaven, yeah. okay? And not only that, we also have authority in the earth according to Christ's word and on the heaven. So I'm just ministering like this. All of a sudden, the Lord said, tell them that uh, be not surprised if I allow a demon to come their way. Nobody likes to hear that in the church. So I said, and the Lord says, be not surprised that a demon will come your way to prove that greater is he that is in you than the demon that is messing up with you. So I say that, and I go, like, just now. I go, wow. And I know what I'm hearing. All of a sudden, a guy that is 6'5", 6'7", 270 pounds, sits in the back, and I'm still teaching, and he's making fun of my teaching. You know, making comments. And after he's making comments, he gets bold, and he says, I'm going to kill you. So he's running towards me, and... 95.8 of the congregation left the building, like Elvis left the building and they went after Elvis. That type of a scenario. So my wife is my cheerleader. She's glued to the chair. She's not going nowhere. So she's looking at me like, I wonder what the man of God is going to do. So I'm asking to the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do? Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not in your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will tell you what to do. So now, by now, you know, the church was a little bigger in that direction. Now the demon is six, seven feet away from me. And I'm asking the Lord, Lord, what do I do? The guy's bigger than I do. Possess, you know. So the Lord said, stick out your finger and tell the demon that he was waiting for him to bow down. But now there's nothing in the way. He trips. I think the angel of the Lord made him trip. Flies in the air and landed right over here. So I'm saying, you said he was going to kill me? <laughs> you know, now I'm flexing my spiritual muscles. And his back is full of demons. So I said, Lord, what else do you want me to do? Say, cast the two demons out of him. Cast the two demons. The guy jumped, started glorifying God. Just without me touching the guy. Then the cops came, the, the people from the outside called them. And the cops said, I heard that somebody here is making a threat. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was a guy like that and he left, meaning Satan and him left. But his body stood behind. Where is the body? By now he's eating a donut and having coffee. He said, he's not bothering nobody. I told you, the bad guy left. <laughs> Without giving him the whole the story, right? And my wife said, wow. So, so I, I love when God sets you up. Yes. I'm saying this because it goes with the affliction. You could get bent out of shape when you don't have a relationship with Christ. You see, I, I, I serve the Lord. And if he don't bail me out, I'm done. Right. Yeah. You see, he watches over me. I trust him 100%. Amen. So to understand that there are many afflictions <coughs> coming your way, the number one point that I want to make, you must have fully trust in him. Yeah. Not, not, not head knowledge. Trust in friendship and in relationship, just like David with the Lord. You see, to me, anything natural, you could lose. 
but never lose the Holy Spirit of God in you. For that's the power of God and that's the authority of salvation through the Holy Spirit. You see, other churches that I know that they deal with that, they call the bodyguard, the, the, the ushers. And they drag the men outside and they throw him out. I never see Jesus in the scripture doing that. That's right, amen. Right? What is he say? Satan, get behind me. Because in the relationship with Christ, you know that there is authority. You know, remember Peter, um, as the disciples are running, Jesus is ministering, and um, he asked the other people, who do you say that I am? Oh, you're a good man in Matthew, you know, connected with Mother Teresa. Okay, but then he tells Peter, Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus responded, Flesh and blood have not revealed that. Right. But my Father, the Spirit of the Lord. Yes. And then he says, upon that revelation, yeah. I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. That's authority. Yeah. That whatsoever you bind on the earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose. So if we have that relationship with Christ, even if you don't know it, you have the keys of the kingdom. Amen. Thank you, Lord. No matter what is ahead of you, speak to the mountain of difficulty. Begin to minister to them and never hold back. Amen. Amen. Let me see. Do you, are you recording that? No. I thought you did. Go ahead. Oh, oh, are you recording? Good, good, good. Okay. So now, because we got a lot of people and I want to be faithful to the time, I want each and every one of you who would like to receive prayer or ministry to step right in the front. A single line there would be nice. Don't step over the dog. He's taking a nap. We have to be mindful of the dog. Oh, he's ready, he's ready. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Good Lord. Thank you. Uh, it, it, it is the word of the Lord. Now, I, I was debating between two words for the house. Could I tell you what was the other word? Sure. Yeah. Okay, only three people are interested in the other word. Okay, the, the other word was the mind of Christ. Having the mind of Christ. And there are eight points. I'm, I'm going uh, to mail you the, the teaching, okay? okay. I'm going to do that. So, so the mind of Christ has eight points, right? How do we know that we have the mind of Christ? Does not the Bible say that each shall know them by their fruit? Yeah. So you, you're connected to the tree, and, and whatever is on the tree is going to be in you. So it has to do with the mind of Christ. I just made some notes there. And, but, but I felt like the Lord said, no. Mention the me early, early, early. This is the message that I have for the house. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ma, did I have the oil there? Uh, the oil. Okay, no, good, okay. good. Yes, sir. I'm not here for me. I'm here for my family. Okay, so we do that. Let's do that first. Okay, don't go. Revival. Network, okay. No, just, it's just revival. Oil. Oil. Okay, so that's what the family needs yeah. then. <laughs> Hallelujah. B. Hallelujah, come on, yeah. For the family, right? Right. Family means children, grandkids, the Everything. family. Everything. Hallelujah. Huh? Oh. He's got to have a hip replacement. Okay. We, knee yeah. replacement. Okay, hallelujah. One second, brother, hold this a second. Hallelujah. My son, my son. I don't know what I have to do here to get oil. I will help you. Okay, see. Oh, this one's empty. Oh, empty. oh. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. But this is full. Go ahead. That one. Thank you. Yeah, no wonder I'm trying and medical is not happening. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go ahead, Dima. Apparently, we had. We, we, we had. Yeah. And your name, sir? Bob D. John. Bob, brother Bob, brother Bob. Rebo Shilidi Korraba Setoru Korraba Se. Landara Korraba Shilidi Diara de Borraba de Borla da Base Torcoya. Father, we know that it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Heavenly Father, you bless by single and you bless by many. Heavenly Father, by the authority of Christ, we release the word of the living God to his house, to his member, to his family, even those that he will not see in the flesh. Father, that you will keep the hand of the devourer away from the dwelling place. 
that there will be people of covenant, that they will dwell on the secret place of the Most High, where the enemy will not be able to touch them. And Heavenly Father, I ask that even tonight, you give him vision, open his spiritual eyes, O oh God, that he will see the future of his family. And let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding come upon him. Let it not be troubled for it, but in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Okay, you know what I like about this man of God? You didn't come asking for you for nothing. But you came to ask for your children. So Heavenly Father, because the man of God is more interested in others than in himself. Enlarge the days of life, O oh God. Give him eyes with clear to that he will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Father, grant them to see weddings take place, that he will witness the weddings. Father, give him dream and vision of what holds two, three, four years down the block, that he will know that it is the Lord that God speaking to him. And Father, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, Lord, that with long life you will satisfy him and show him your salvation yes. in Christ Jesus. Wow, 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 wow. Be. What is that you want the Lord to do for um, you? I have a really bad back and spine. That's it? And okay. I'm supposed to get nerve blocks on Friday. Okay, so let's believe God. Going, be, let's believe that you don't have to go there. Let's believe that the God that we serve is able and capable of doing more. Just put your hand on her back, please. Rebo shata rakara basele de koya. Robi bi 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 di bo rabale di bo la raba shata rakaya. Father, it is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Holy Spirit, I speak to the bones, to the marrow, to the joints, and I decree and declare that you will bring an alignment to her, Lord, that no longer she will be hurting and bent out of shape. Father, I thank you that you will make the crooked place straight. I thank you that she will not have to go through the hand of the doctor to get the blessings of the Lord. Father, we give you praise and glory and honor for making the back straight, oh God. And Lord, pain, go away. Pain, leave the body. Now, Lord, oh Jesus. Breathe, give me that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. So, what, would you go into the doctor or something like that? I need a knee. A knee, knee replacement or whatever the thing is. Hallelujah. Father, there is nothing difficult for you, O oh Lord. Father, I have seen the dead come to life. I have seen the crippled walk. I have seen bone deformity right in front of my eyes, O oh Lord. You have done great and mighty things. And Lord, I thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So Heavenly Father, I decree and declare that those bones that need healing, that the healer is in the house. Father, I ask, O oh God, that if anything that we have done is contradictory to faith, that you forgive us. Any word that we have spoken out of ignorance, that it will be forgiven, O oh Lord. And Father, I ask, O oh Lord, let the bones be made right. And Father, I ask for my brother that he will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living without medical intervention. Father, I thank you, O oh God, for your loving kindness to this man of God. I thank you for your tenderness towards him, O oh God. And Father, I believe, O oh God, the bones will be made whole that the dead will hear and the dead will resurrect. For that's you doing, O oh God. We just witness your holy presence. And Father, now concerning my brother and concerning the future and concerning the finances, no good thing will the Lord withhold to those who walk uprightly. So Heavenly Father, my brother is doing the best he knows. I ask, O oh Lord, that neither oil, nor bread, nor provision, will lack in his house, but that the windows of heaven be open and that the needs that are at hand shall be met. 
But Lord, meet the need of his uh, uh, leg first, oh God, mm -hmm. that he will walk and run and not stumble in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Sister, you have the calling, you are calling and calling, and you love evangelists. So Heavenly Father, I pray for my sister that she will see the miracle first at home and then in the streets. Holy Father, I ask, oh God, that the wandering mind will stop wandering and that she will park in the parking lot of faith. Holy Father, I thank you, oh God, for you said in your word that I have not seen and ears have not heard, not even enter into the heart of men what beautiful and wonderful thing God has prepared for them who love the Lord. And Father, she loves you. Allow her eyes to see the goodness of God at home first yes, yes, and then on the streets. Yes, Lord. Lord, let this day be the day of miracles yes, at home. Yes, and Father, we promise you to give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And um, the Lord is saying there's things that you whisper in your pillow at night. And you don't want no one to know, but you go straight to the Lord. And says the Lord to you, my delay is not my denial. Just keep thanking me for those things that you pray even at night. Hallelujah. And see Thank if I would not open the windows of heaven and bless you with them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What is that you want Jesus to do for you? It's not for me. It's for a week ago. I walked in Kobe Black. He was the most expensive. Okay. How old is the person? Uh, he's 26 years old. He got in, but he might need. Um, treatment for him. Okay. What's the name? Kobe Black. Kobe, Kobe, Kobe. 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 That's just. Give me a second. Kobe, Kobe. Kobe. Mm. And what part of the body has the cancer? My God. Reboshito Rokorra Bakarada Dabasha. Heavenly Father, we thank you for COVID, O oh Lord. Yes. Father, we thank you that no good thing will you hold to those who walk uprightly. For Father, mm -hmm. I thank you that you are God who gives them another chance. Yes. So precious Lord, send your living word to COVID. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we ask that that cancer will be dismantled. Yes. And that you will give them another chance, another opportunity yes. to make the crooked place straight. Yes. Father, you're the God of another chance. Yes. You're God of mercy. You're God of grace. You're the God who sent your word and you heal them. Yes. So precious Heavenly Father, I thank you for COVID. And Lord, I ask, oh God, that my sister will see the goodness of the Lord in his life. Yes. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for keeping the angel of death away from his dwelling places. In Jesus' name. You know, um, Father, I thank you for my sister, Lord. May you increase her ability to minister and to do things for others, even though no other person would know about it. Father, may she be one like the woman at the well who is bringing water for others. And Lord, I ask, oh God, that you will meet her needs, all of her needs, according to your riches and glory to Christ Jesus, oh Lord. And Father, that, that this year coming at hand, 2024, 25. Lord, let it be years of an open heaven towards her, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Father, an abundance yes. of blessings, O oh God. Yes. And with that, give her wisdom, O oh Lord, how to manage those blessings, O oh Lord. And give her an understanding in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to share something private with you when everybody Hallelujah. move concerning John Guy. How old is this young man? How old is Kobe? 26. Okay. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this child, O oh God. Father, I thank you for the hand of God upon his life, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God. I thank you for the child, O oh Lord. I thank you for the calling. I thank you for the gifting. I thank you, Father, um, for the boldness that you will give this child, O oh God, to stand by the gates of the enemy, O oh Lord. And Father, we lift our hands and we yes. said, let your kingdom come yes. upon his life. Let your holy will be established in him, O oh God. And Father, I ask, O oh Lord, that 
you will use them local and outside the country as well. Father, that, that you will open great doors of opportunity to preach, to minister. But Lord, um, with the gifting, oh God, make a way for him, oh God. The doors will open, oh Lord. And Father, I, I thank you. Who's the parents of this child? It's our daughter. She's in, at work right now. Okay, so I just want, I need to know. Our youngest grandson. I need to know, I need to know. I just sense that God has given this child the blueprint, the mind of engineering. Ooh. Like they will put things together and, and, and will help out people together. Like say, for instance, where there was no water, um, he will bring a plan of how to get water for that region. Or where things are, 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 are closed, they're like nothing happening. And, and, and he will seek the mind of the Lord and God will give him a download, you know. And he will be a child that is a troubleshooter. He's always looking to fix the problem versus focusing the problem. So God, um, his ministry is not regular ministry like we know. His ministry is going to be out there in the highways and byways. But I sense that uh, he will work um, for um, a very powerful um, business entity of engineering. Uh, engineering, engineering, and uh, recycling of water, but it's all connected with water, Hallelujah. whatever he will do. Hallelujah. Father, we bless him, and we thank him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What do you want Jesus to do for you? Heavenly Father, we thank you for my sister. And we decree and declare through the shield of faith that no weapon formed against her will prosper. That she will learn to cast her cares upon you, O Lord, for you truly care for her. Father, we decree and declare the blood of Jesus over her mind. And Father, we come against any spirit of oppression and depression that will try to park herself in this parking lot. So Father, we decree again that you will give her, O God, the wisdom, how to manage and the skills how to use the Bible, specific, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the two-edged sword, which is the word of God, shutting her feet with the preparation of the gospel of Jesus the Christ, holding her place in Christ. And Father, we thank you for giving her a hunger and a thirst for your word and for your presence. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sister, do you have a second that I could share something with you? Okay, good. All right, ready for this? You know, a, a, a CD that is plastic, if it gets scraped, it, it, it could not pass. All record plays, the vinyl, the black vinyl, if you had a scratch, the needle would stay there stuck. You know, it could not go just stuck. Our mind operates the same way. Sometimes we get a thought or whatever, and we go over and over and over. And just those thoughts will wear you down. You know, and it seems like you could not shake them. By speaking the word, like, Satan, get behind me. Stop talking to me lies. And they might think that you're crazy, so what? As long as those thoughts leave your mind. But then the other thing is, you have to fill those thoughts with the word of God. Because that's what's going to give you strength. Mm -hmm. So now, if you don't speak to those mountains and problems, that needle, the mind keeps repeating and repeating and repeating, and it gets worse. But it's a lie. But you believe a lie because your mind is talking to you. You know what? You cannot switch the channel. You're stuck there. And God doesn't want you to get stuck there. God has a purpose for you. Uh, I see you with a whistle uh, in, your, in your mouth and coaching people like um, basketball um, game for the girls and so forth. God has a good destiny for you. He has things up and be not surprised that through this uh, beginning of doing things for the girls, it's like a coach. That God will open doors overseas. So it's not, a, so, but you need that sound mind. You need to be focused on what God has for you. You know, uh, don't, don't be a wannabe. Be a person that God has trust you 
with um, integrity and with authority all your hands right mm -hmm. but the mind has to function right so get the word of the lord like romans 12 1 and 2 i beseech you brethren by the mercies of god that you transform your mind you know that you worship god properly so things like that that has to do with your mind and ask the lord to help you how to overcome that Amen. one thing leads to the other one either good but also bad don't park yourself in that parking lot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Men of God, what is that you want the Lord to do for you? Wisdom, I, understanding, and direction. Okay, hallelujah. Wisdom. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your word, O oh God. And it said that if any man lack of wisdom, let him ask the Lord, who will give you uh, liberally. And Lord, concerning his steps. You said in your word that the word of the Lord is a lamp into my feet that I may walk and run and not stumble. Yeah. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my brother, Lord. And sometimes I don't know him, but he gets hard up on himself. Yeah. And, and I'm sensing that the Spirit of God is saying that you have to be a little more um, merciful to yourself. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and you have to trust that as long as you stayed in your lane with the Lord, he will make the crooked place straight for you. Hallelujah. And, and, and you're a guy that you like to think, like say, if you're going to buy a car, you analyze everything, you anal analyze the price and whatever, and then you go and buy it. And, and, and the Lord says, I'm going to bless you uh, in the days to come with buys and cars when other people will not get that, just to prove to you that I'm the Lord that God and I care for you and, and I have everything of your house covered, says the Lord. Be not surprised, says the Lord, that um, sometime in between this year and next year, I will open a mighty effective door for you to go to Arizona. Be not surprised that it will be a trip that will change you because you're going to see the, the fullness, the, the bigger picture from, I, from God's perspective. And this is not something that you have planned and prayed. It's something that I'm going to open a door. Either you go through the door or you don't. And, and I keep seeing, uh, I, I don't know what car you drive or whatever, but I see in this dealer, a uh, Mazda dealer, Mazda, looking at a great SUV. Something that a door, supernatural door, is going to open for you. And you could, again, say yes, Lord, or you could say no. God will never uh, uh, push you. Father, I thank you. Mom, put oil here on the hands. Okay. Okay. <coughs> You, if I give you a scripture, you will remember? Deuteronomy 8.18. For it is the Lord thy God who gives you the power to acquire wealth. So that the promise that he made Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob may be established in you this day, says God. For surely you are a good steward of what I have given you. But do not be so hard on yourself, says the Lord. Enjoy life and, and, and also to be a man that you plan, but also be sensitive to allow the Holy Spirit to maneuver you. You see, and that's what uh, Arizona will be. That's what uh, it will be with um, uh, the, the automobile that I saw. Okay, you remind me of me a lot. Let me tell you what. I have a refrigerator that was like 25, 29 years. Good work. My wife didn't want another one. And I said, Lord, you know, I don't want to go and buy another one. I'm happy with that one. So one day I'm praying and the Lord said, go and buy your wife. <laughs> so I go running. I go running to the store, and there is a sale from two thousand four hundred to sixteen hundred with tax. I'm still thinking that is a lot of money because the other one is worth. But anyhow, I go to three or fours, and they say that's a good buy, so I bought it for her. But you see what I mean? I'm not easily moved by things or whatever. I need to hear from God. Hallelujah, <laughs> Heavenly Father. I thank you that my sheep hear my voice, and they will not follow the voice of a stranger. So precious, Lord, either through dreams and visions, continually to lead them and guide them. And Lord, let the word of the Lord, as he does his devotion, open it up. Open, open his eyes, open his ears, and give him a heart of understanding. And Father, I thank you that all of this that I'm speaking is by the Spirit of God, because I don't even know nothing. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But let me build your faith, because you're struggling with the car. You don't have a need of a car. So I met a pastor with a big church in um, Schenectady. Mm -hmm. So 
I went to priest that day, and he's seven with me. It's a big church, mega church. And so the guy's taking me out for, for dinner. And I said, okay, here we go. I did this. We went to Appleby. When I touched the, the steps of, 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 of the concrete, the Lord said, tell him that a man is going to come and put a keys on a um, Cadillac SDS uh, green because that color is, is like avocado green. You don't see them. And then the interior is going to be green but not leather uh, fabric. He started, you know, shaking or whatever. And I said, don't get emotional. Let's go and eat the burger. You know, like <laughs> I already gave you the word. <laughs> so we go, get the word, blah, blah, come out. Not even three months later, a man came, like the Lord gave him the key, no payment, no 32000 just the key, 20 out the car. For with God, all things are possible. The only thing that we have to do is believe him. But if we don't believe him, say, Lord, heal my unbelief that I may see these things, mm -hmm. that doors may open and I walk through them. Mm -hmm. So don't try, when you get a word, to try to figure out how God, that's his responsibility. The only thing that he has to do is believe him. Amen. Amen. Okay? Hallelujah. Amen. Brother, come over here. Let's just minister to you. Jesus. Wow, my heart, my heart. Jesus. B, go ahead. What is it you want the Lord to do for you? Understanding. Of the word? How? The word, relationship. Okay. My marriage. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. My How are you doing, young lady? That's it. That's it. That's more than. That's more than. Than enough. It's, it's, I have a lot of stuff right there. Hallelujah. Reboshita rakara basito rokola rabashita rokola rabashita rokola rabashara basara. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Rokoshiti ribokora rabashito rokola rabaka. Rendo rokola rabashito rokola rabashito rokora rabasata rakala rabasara. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my brother because he has not asked for a long life, nor silver, nor gold, oh God. But to give him wisdom how to manage the affair of his house. Yes. Holy Father, I ask that he will open his spiritual eyes to see in the spirit realm as you will enable him to see. Give him ears, oh God, to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying concerning his household. But, Father, with the seeing and with the hearing, grant them a heart of understanding. Father, that he will have a perfect balance concerning decision-making. But, Lord, I pray for a double portion of your love for his family, a supernatural love of grace and mercy. Then even when he knows that he's speaking the truth, let it be done with love, grace, and mercy. And, Father, even when people around will not understand that he will weep, oh God, for the things that you are revealing to him. And Father, through weakness, he will be strong, supernatural strong man of God through the strength of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Father, now I thank you, oh God, Hallelujah. for wisdom in how to manage the finances that you are placing upon his hand. Father, that he will not hold too tight and lose everything, but that he will not be too loose and don't gain what you tell him. Lord, May he be balanced by the Spirit of the Lord. May he know the times and seasons of God concerning home. May he know that the children will grow so fast and that they will leave. That this is a privilege that God has given him to raise those kids in the ways of the Lord. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for that giving dreams and vision. And Lord, I pray for him and his wife, O oh God, that both of them will be in the same page, O oh God, not one page and the other one that they would be sensitive to the need of one another. And Lord, that when one cried, the other one would cry. When one laughed, the other one would laugh, oh God. For the two shall be one according to your word, oh Lord. So Father, now I thank you for making a way of escape for both of them, that they could go to places and, and, and enjoy the fellowship and the children will enjoy the fruit of the labor. Lord, open the eyes. And instead of driving with the short beans, more Lord, allow him to see with the high beans. Father, I give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Lord, it's a time. Uh, I, I feel that you have to read Ecclesiastic 3. It's the book that talks about time. There's a time and everything under heaven. So, Lord, I ask that you will fine-tune his time and season according to your word and according to your will. In the name of Jesus. Okay. What is your name, young lady? Violet. Violet. 
<laughs> oh, like Violet, call the Violet. Reboshiti di Mokora Vaseto Rokolada Makara Vaseto Rokolada Makara. Hallelujah. Pilate, I, God loves you a lot, you know. And that personality that you have, he gave it to you. But, you know, you, 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 <laughs> at time, you know, you extend grace. But the second at time, you remind me like a firecracker. If this thing passes, I'm not going to put up with this thing or whatever the thing. But this is her personality. Yeah. But the Lord says, I'm going to visit you even at this season. And grace shall be extended to you. Yeah. Though you know that you're right, but you will extend grace and mercy yeah. above and beyond. And then you will see how the Lord is going to take this equipment <coughs> out of your heart. Uh, uh, because the enemy has um, infiltrated some areas of your heart that at times you're quick to cut things out. Like with grace and mercy, okay, you pass the line. No more grace, no more mercy. But the Lord says, no, I'm doing a new work in your heart, says the Lord. And for surely, it's going to be established <laughs> at home. And for surely, God uh, is going to do something. I see you as a nurse. Hear me out. Not a regular nurse, but a nurse uh, sent by God with things. And God is going to allow you uh, to go through a season, like when you do things for others, that he's going to burst a broken and contra heart in you. And you will say, Lord, forgive me. I never saw these things. I never was touched by these things. And by that, then God says, now you shall be ready for more things. Uh, I, I, I don't know if it's, you're going to volunteer, uh, whether it's these things happening has to do with sickness and has to do with poverty, has to do with things that it, it, it will shock you. But the Lord will say, you will go and you will come back a different woman. Be not surprised if it's in Romania. Be not surprised that it's outside <laughs> this country. And even a place that you might not speak the language. But in this trip, you will go one way and come back home the other one, says God. And what about you? Are you related to me? No kidding, you look just like Mama. <laughs> the only thing I have from Dad is his toothy eyes. Okay, that's all good. That's all good. Thank that's you, all Lord. Sito rokora va, sito rokola va, shele de bokora va sa. Yanda rokala va, sito rokola va, sito rokola va ka. Hallelujah. I'm gonna make you laugh. And I time I see you that you operate with the brakes on. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And skid mark, skid mark, six, skid mark, skid mark. And how old are you now? Okay, yeah, you are like 27 right now. But anyhow, <laughs> when, when, when you get 16 and 17, I just sense that the Lord is going to visit you in such a special way. And you shall not use skid marks no more. And you shall not use the brakes no more. But it will be, yes, Lord, yes, Dad, yes, Mom. And just a supernatural change Hallelujah. from the perspective of how you see things and how you perceive things. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for a school that you will be a graduate, oh God, in a college, oh Lord. Father, I thank you that she has a strong personality, oh Lord. But Father, with a strong personality, it is good because she will have a strong personality concerning the things of the kingdom as well. And Father, I give you the praise and the glory and the honor, oh Lord, that you are the God who adjusts our personality. You're the God who allows, oh God, to go through things in life to bring yeah. adjustment, oh Lord. Hallelujah. And Father, I thank you, I mm. thank you, and I thank mm -hmm. you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Be not surprised that when you get older, the Lord will open the door to be a police officer. Mm. Be not surprised of that. Yeah. And I see that it might be three or four years, and then you will go back to school and become, um, like, in, 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 in the department of theft <coughs> and fraud and whatever. And, and that will be more of your niche than a regular patrol in the street. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. When they do frauds and they check out credit cards and how people take advantage yeah. of other people. Father, I thank you for this child, oh Lord. Yeah. And I ask, oh Father, that the gates of hell will not prevail against her destiny and purpose, oh God. 
And Father, I thank you and I give you the praise and the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. What do you want Jesus to do for you now? Because you pray for your friend, right? The guy who has cancer. Just a YouTuber, so you really don't know him. Okay. I know a little bit about him. A little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But how about you? How about for you? Choosing himself, choosing himself. Uh huh. Okay. Absolutely. Urabashito, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you're the God of purpose. Lord, I ask, oh God, that you will always remain on our lane. And, Father, that you could help others, but you would have to remain on her lane. Heavenly Father, we thank you that she will not be sucked in into things right. that she don't have no business. Mm -hmm. And, Father, may she guard her heart, oh yeah. God, so that people will not take advantage of That's her good right. heart, oh Lord. Right. In the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. amen. So now, we're not done. You could just, just want to share this. Uh, I'm in this church, and, and God is moving mightily, and everybody comes running to the front of the church. Preacher, preacher. I want you to invoke a blessing on me, right? <coughs> so this young guy is 21 years old, and I don't want to lay hands on him because I don't know the guy. So all of a sudden, I'm going slow like that, and the angel of the Lord grabbed my hand and put my hand down and yelled in my ear, I will not bless fornication. And I go, oh, Lord, this is fornication is having sex without getting married. So I go, oh, okay. So I put my mic down, and I asked the young guy, are you belong to this church. He said, no, I go to another church. And I said, you want me to bless you? He said, yeah. And God says, no, because you're doing this fornication business. He started crying. He was having sex with a girl in the other church, 15 years old, and he's 21. Guess how he died from? Cancer. You know, so a lot of time we care for people, but we have to ask the Lord, Lord, what door did he open? When you pray for them, what door do they open? And you'll be surprised. The guy would either give you a picture or show you because God don't want no one to take advantage of you. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Okay. Young lady. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, uh, the Lord left the best for last, right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Rhonda. Hallelujah. What do you want Jesus to do for you? I want Hallelujah. I get several. Great grandchildren, Lord God, I love that. Okay. Especially if you, and they need to get straight. Yeah, out yeah, yeah. Them. Not a problem. Not a problem. I got it. I got it. Thank you, Oh, rabashito rokor rabaseto rokola rabaka. Yendo rokor rabashili di kola rabaseto rokor rabase. Randa rale raboshili di kor rabaseto rokor rabaka. Landa rale di bor rabaseto rokola rabaka rabasa. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word, O oh God, that no good thing will you hold for them who walk uprightly. Yes. Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, for the uprightly walk of my sister. Yes. Heavenly Father, I thank you that she qualified for miracles. Right. Heavenly Father, I thank you that no good thing you will hold back from her because she walked uprightly. So Holy Spirit, we come into the prayer of agreement. Yes. That all of those things that she has on her heart, Jesus. that no man has to hear but you alone, oh God. Father, that you will visit her yes. uh, 30 days yes. visitation yes. concerning those members, oh God. And Father, give her a picture, give her a vision, yes. give her a video of the things that you will do in them and through them. And Father, we ask that you have mercy Jesus. and you have grace yes. upon the family. And yes. let the blood of Jesus Thank wash them from any iniquity. Thank Lord, I thank you thank that you, they will taste of you mm -hmm. and the truth of the Lord will set them free Hallelujah. by the Spirit of Almighty God. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we know that it is yes. not by might, yes. nor by power, but by my Spirit, yes. says the Lord. Yes. Father, thank you for giving her many years that yes. she will see the goodness yes. of God in the land of the living. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Where's your wife? 